Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to talk about how to rig properly for slalom sailing. Make sure that you stay tuned right until the end where I will be telling you guys the two biggest rigging mistakes that I believe people make when they rig for slalom sailing. When going from soft sails over to full on race sails, the difference in rigging technique is massive and the way you rig your race sail has a huge impact on the performance and the enjoyment of your session. Each and every sail brand will have its own unique setup and style of what is the most optimized way to rig it. So obviously for today, I'm going to be nailing down exactly how I love to rig my Severn race sails. So I've been extremely fortunate as a team rider for Severn to every year get their new sails. In this process over the years, I've definitely learned how the Severn sails operate, the optimal way to rig them to match my personal sailing style. I basically worked my way through all the sails. I started way back at the Gators, then I switched over to the NCX sails, from there on over to the Turbos, the Code Reds, Reflex 7s, Reflex 8s, Mac 1 and ultimately now Mac 2. If you sell a different brand, some of the tips would also definitely be very helpful for you. So I will give you guys a quick description of how to get to the point where your cell is completely rigged and from there on I will give you the fine-tuned tips that has proved to be magical to me and my selling performance. So first up, roll down your cell so that the zippers of the loft is facing upwards. Make sure you zip open all the pockets in the loft sleeve, then slide in your mast and make sure it goes in on top of all the canvas. Make sure that it goes right to the top. So with Severn cells, if you've got all the correct Severn components, these numbers on the cell are extremely accurate, so you can just follow them strictly. So my extension here is on 32, so I set it on 32. What's nice about the Severn extensions is that with a full pulley system, it's really much easier to down all the cell. Make sure before you down all that the mast has not split apart. Then pull the down all as far as you possibly can and put on your boom. Remember to move the boom towards the center of the opening because then you can reach in with your hand easily to put on the canvas. I personally don't like to pull in the out hole too tight at this point in time. It's easier to place the canvas onto the mast if the out hole isn't that tight. You have to release the down hole quite a lot in order to put on all the canvas. I normally start at about 10 to 15 centimeters. So start off with the middle canvas. I put my left hand on the mast and with my right hand I reach underneath the mast, put it on top of the center of the camber and press with my right knee onto the lip of the camber, forwards and downwards so that, so that the camber slips on easily onto the mast. Moving down to the next camber, with this one the right hand goes onto the mast, the left hand goes underneath the mast in the pocket. And for this one, I use a fin cover on my knee to prevent bruising. And I press slightly down. So I start with the center camber, then I move upwards to the top canvas, and then I go down to the bottom canvas. I that the bottom one is very strenuous, which in most cases is, and you keep on pushing and it doesn't want to go in. That means you need to, you need to release more down or. Once all the canvas are on, you can go and put in all your down all that you need. Once your down all is tightened, you can go to the out all and you'll see that the cell on the out all is very loose now, so it's easy to set your out all where you want it to be. I know there's a lot of different methods in rigging your cell up to this point and a lot of people use different methods, but this method personally for me works brilliantly each and every single time. So now that your cell is rigged, it is time for all the fine tuning. 
Charles and I were out and I realized that I couldn't keep up with him. He checked out my cell and we decided to release a little bit of downhaul. That made all the difference. Suddenly I could go much faster. The downhaul that you put on your race cell makes a massive difference in the cell's performance and feel. When you pull too much downhaul, the cell will become very unstable, twitchy, and even though you might have better acceleration, your planing speed will be lower. The board will also become unstable and it will start to fly off the water. With too little downhaul, the sail feels dead, heavy, it pulls really hard and you'll have difficulty accelerating. You'll also find that the rotation will not happen so easily. It's important if you downhaul your sail to check the top three panels of the sail and make sure that the shape that they are flowing into resembles that of a spiral. So when you stand on the sail on the bottom of the mast and you let the sail lift off the ground in a diagonal angle, you can easily see how the top part of the sail is spiraling downwards. So the more downhaul you put in, the more you will see that top part will become loose. So it's important to find the perfect balance where that cell doesn't become too much downhaul and the profile flattens too much and you lose a lot of power when you sell. I normally follow the boomerang sign on top of the cell so that the fold that forms in the top part of the cell sits more or less where the boomerang starts. This is a very nice visual guide for me always because Severn cells always have their boomerang at the same spot. So it's an easy reference point to see how much of a downhaul you want in your cell. So the final test to see if you've got enough downhaul tension is let someone stand at the top of the cell onto the mast and then you press down on this side and it should easily pop through. I really prefer to set the bottom buttons very tight so it really sets the cell into a proper profile for that bottom end power that you want. And then moving to the top part of the cell, I don't make them as tight as I make the bottom buttons. You will also see as you set your buttons that if there are vertical creases that forms on your cell, then that means you need to put in more tightening of that specific button and you will see how the creases will disappear. So that is an important thing to do all year round. Check your buttons always because they do change over time as the cell stretches. So Vern had the clever idea to put the button tensioner within the cell so that you can easily set your button tension while you're actually on the beach. The Severn cells, when they come out of the bag, has got the perfect set amount of spaces in them if you use the correct mast. So there's no need to put in more spaces when you receive your new Severn rice cell. In fact, if you do put in too many spaces, the rotation of that cell will become super strenuous and it could also damage your mast. The Severn cells are such high quality and they really last very long. So normally for me, even throughout the year, I don't really tend to put in any more spaces. The cell really stays in its preferred shape and it doesn't really stretch out within a year's time for me before I get my new cells. So I don't really mess around with my spaces in my race cells. If you have your cell for more than a year and you see that the cell has stretched and you see that the luff becomes um, creasy and loose, it is important to put spaces in just to reinforce that profile that you want on the luff and to tighten that whole section of the cell. I personally prefer to put in as much of tack strap tension as possible. So I basically pull my tack strap the way I would pull my downhaul. I put my feet against the, the mast and I really pull the tack strap as tight as I possibly can. And that establish a very good curve in the bottom part of the cell. The tighter the tack strap, the more low end pressure you have within the cell. And I personally love that because I want that power and acceleration and stability in the cell. If you first start off with your race cells and you are used to the NCX cells and the soft cells, it's better to put in a little bit less of the tack strap tension so that you can experience more high end control. So just a quick summary of all the Severn masts. First up, the SDM mast, which goes into all the soft cells and the NCXs. And then secondly, this is Severn's premium race mast, high performance Apex Pro Redline masts. These masts are the lightest mast in the Severn range and they've got 100% carbon content. They've got a tapered shape, starting from a standard bottom that tapers down all the way to an RDM top, specifically for the full-on race cells of Severn. 
And then the RDM red line masts, this mast specifically is for the smaller sized race cells, like the 5.5 max cells. Then the blue line masts, they've got a less of a carbon content, so a little bit more fiberglass in them, so they're a little bit more flexible. They are also light, but they're not as light as the red line masts. So this mast is definitely a little bit more stronger than the pure red line masts, and for these ones, I would definitely use with wave sailing. And then lastly, the Gorilla Mast is the strongest, most durable mast of Severn. They are quite thicker, they are basically unbreakable, and they've got a two-year, no questions asked, guarantee on them. So these ones I would definitely use for proper wave sailing. So this is a very good visual comparison between the standard mast and the standard Apex Pro Redline Mast. In my left hand, you can see how the Apex Pro Mast just tapers down to the top, whereas the standard mast doesn't taper down. Severn actually designs the cells around the mast. The mast are tested at seven designated offsets to precisely mirror the love curve of the cell. And this directly translates into how the cell feels. If you are going to use a full-on Severn rice cell, you need to use a Severn mast for that cell to get the proper performance out of that cell that you want. For the 7.8 specifically, I use the 460 Apex Pro, and for the 7, I use the 430 Apex Pro. The moment I switched over to the Apex mast, it almost felt like someone put a shock breaker into the cell and put on an acceleration button because those Apex masts have got a very much of a soft feel and they are forgiving. So the cell feels a lot more lighter and you can harness a lot more power while staying in control. Apex Pro masts are ideal for these bigger sized Severn's race cells. The rotation of the cell happens effortlessly. If you guys have used, maybe in the past, way back, the code red cells of Severn, it didn't pop through as easily. And sometimes you really have to shake that cell to get it to pop through. But today, the, if you are using a top end race cell of Severn, that cell should be popping through without any effort. If you use a standard mast in the Severn rice cells, that cell is not going to rotate easily and you'll feel the cell is very heavy and it's not so enjoyable. So if your cell is not popping through properly, you are either using the wrong mast or you have put in way too many spaces. So you will notice that the canvas are designed for apex masts where the bottom two canvas will be standard size and the top canvas will be skinny mast size. Now with the Mac 2s, Severn has created the 6 2 so that you can actually rig it with a skinny mast. So the 5 5 and the 6 2, both of them, are rig on skinny masts and that has been life changing. The 62 goes on a 430 skinny mast and my 55 goes on a 400 skinny mast. Ever since I've rigged my 62 with a skinny mast, it has almost felt as light as my wave cells. It does not even feel like a race cell anymore at all. I need to constantly remind myself that I'm actually now on a full on race cell. Some of the heavier guys may still prefer to use an apex mast in the 62 and not a skinny mast because it's more powerful. But for me, I'm super light, so for me personally, I definitely prefer the 6-2 rigged with a skinny mast. Sometimes the cell will come with apex canvas. Then you can just replace the bottom two canvas that were standard for an apex for skinny mast canvas. At first, way back, when I started using the race cells, I tend to pull in the outdoor way too much because it was such a big difference, the feeling between the NCX going to a full race cell because there was so much more power and I didn't know how to handle all that power all of a sudden. And I think for a whole year, I sailed like that with my race cells. But I always felt that the cell was definitely um, not stable the way I thought it should be. And it feels a lot more twitchy in a stormy wind situation. I've noticed that I'm actually a lot more out of control when my auto is too tight. So naturally, I just... Um, I've reversed that whole psychology in my brain and when I feel overpowered I try to avoid pulling in that out all too much because you lose stability and when you lose stability the cell is not in its autopilot mode anymore. You now have to compensate for everything with your body whereas when you keep that cell's profile it sort of automatically stays on the fly and you stay in position and it stays in control. Rather just lower the boom so you can get far away from the cell 
and let the cell do the work. So I prefer a very balanced outdoor. I let it loose so that the cell presses um, slightly against the other side of the boom, not completely, not bagged against the boom, because then I tend to feel a lot more backhand pressure and it feels draggy. The cell feels lifeless if it's backed too much against the boom. That will also definitely distort the profile and the performance of the cell. Of course, on very strong wind days, I would obviously pull in a little bit of outdoor. Just a small few centimeters will make all the difference for you. Just as important as it is to use the right mast in your race cell, it is extremely important to use a proper race boom. I obviously would recommend Severn's race booms because those booms are extremely stable and strong and they are very light. And the most important aspect is that the profile of those booms are very wide. That ensures that your cell has got room to breathe and to shape into its proper profile. Where if you're going to be using a free race boom or a quite narrower boom that was not designed for the race cell profile, you will not be able to use that cell in its optimal racing profile. The performance and your enjoyment level of that session will not be the same. So my biggest race boom, the 230, I only need one of them because that boom goes onto my 7.8, my 7 and my 6.2. For my 5.5, five, I've got one step smaller race boom from Severn, also an Enigma boom. This boom is also super light and it's a, a little thinner than the biggest one. And both of these booms, I've got an adjustable outdoor kit on them. I wrap my booms with medical bandage tape, which really gives proper grip onto the boom because my booms last so long and I don't necessarily need to replace them every year. I always used to be the one who sells with my boom way too high because I learned how to windsurf on wave gear and in overpowered conditions. So what I used to do always is put my boom way high and then put in very short harness lines and then pull the whole rig over my body so that I just lose all the power and therefore I survived all the storms and the heavy conditions. But when you go over to racing sales and you are selling optimal conditions, it is not ideal to have such high boom. So I've learned over the years that I must put down my boom. In combination with using a waist to race harness, my boom isn't at the absolute lowest point because that just feels very uncomfortable for me. I personally prefer to have the boom a little bit higher than the end points of the boom gap in the sail sleeve. For speed selling, it's a different story. Then the boom goes all the way down. When you move the boom down, that really helps to increase the angle between your body and the cell so that the cell stays more upright while you can lean back and lock yourself in position. So you definitely get maximum amount of power. Also, when the wind is extremely strong, the lower that you can put your boom, the more control you have because the more further away your body is from your gear. And also, if you're pushing yourself out towards the side and you're going over chop, your legs won't be going up and down onto the board and banging, you will be in this angle. So it's a lot more controllable with regards to chop management as well. A very valuable measurement reference when you start off and you're unsure where to place your boom height is to measure from your palm of your hand, of the one hand to the palm of the other hand, from your universal where the mask attached to the board and straighten your arms out and then all the way up to your top hand and at the point on your mast where this palm ends that is more or less where I always started off with my boom height and then as the conditions change I will adjust from that point onwards so with the Apex Pro mast Severn used a non-slip section in the boom area so that when you clamp the boom on you do not have to clamp it too tight it will sit firmly onto the mast without clamping it too tight and when you clamp a boom too tight onto the mast, that can damage the mast. I know it's mainstream advice to use very long harness lines because that goes together with the whole concept of getting far away from your cell and having that control. But once again, like in my Lurid's um, gear rigging video, in the end of the day, you need to do what works for you and your body. At first, way back, I started off with 24 harness lines and that was way before I was a team rider for Severn. I used super short harness lines and I do agree that was way too short for me. I increased my harness line length all the way up to 28 but at that point in time I was not yet dropping my boom low enough. So my boom was high and I was using these really long harness lines to compensate. 
So I discovered that the sweet spot for me is to shorten the honest lines to 26 and then I drop my boom lower. So the combination of the lower boom with the shorter honest lines was absolutely magic for me. If you're much taller than me with much longer arms, obviously I would definitely recommend um, setting your honest line length quite longer than what I do. So do not just do stuff because it's mainstream advice. Feel it and test it and try different things. So that is why it's very, very handy to have the adjustable harness lines of Severn. They've got a very nice mechanism with which you can actually set them while you're on the fly. I don't set harness lines while I am actually busy planning. I definitely set them beforehand. The placement of your harness lines on the boom when using a race cell, you need to be able to feel that on both hands it's the same pressure. And that you can't just test standing on the beach and hooking in and standing and feeling the wind. You actually need to be on the water. Over the past two years, I've learned how to move my harness lines closer together because I used to sail with harness lines really wide apart because I was so used to all the soft sails and going over to the race sails. I just wanted to feel that I'm in control of the cell and that the cell is like stable. But it was actually the worst thing to do because the cell needs to be allowed to breathe. I moved all the way from about this length and I pulled them together to about this length. And this for me has been such a sweet spot where I feel that the cell is able to open and close naturally in its own mechanism. So when a gust comes, my body doesn't feel that heavy drag. I do not have to constantly compensate with my own body to control the gust. If you have got the harness lines closer together, the cell is able to pivot naturally. So when the gust hits, the cell can open up automatically. If your harness lines are way too wide, you basically will oversheat the cell and you will kill off a lot of the power. So the cell won't have room to pivot and to breathe naturally and to allow the gust to open and close it up as it should. The reason why some guys put their harness lines super wide is because they have failed to find that sweet spot on the boom where the harness lines are perfectly in balance. They try to cover the whole range of areas so that that cell stays stable and that there's no pressure on either one of the two arms. All the freestyle guys like Shaw was big time into freestyle so what he does is he just moves these harness lines together like that. There's no gap in between them. That is on the other side of the scale and I've actually t tried that but I didn't really, um, I don't really enjoy the feeling of the cell then. It then really feels a little bit like pivoting too much for me. But that's personal preference, obviously. So definitely strike that balance. So take your time, take an easy day where it's not a storm and you can feel where the cell is pulling and pushing onto your arms. Once you have reached that point where you have set your honor lines in the correct position, start from there and then start moving them in closer together like that. So in a place like Langebon, which I think a lot of you guys can relate to, the wind tends to change a lot over the course of the lagoon because it's a very long distance. One part of the lagoon might be super light 50 knots wind and then in the deeper part of the lagoon that wind picks up by another 5 or 6 knots. Then I would definitely want to adjust my altal on the fly. It's really not so difficult to learn that. I always thought that I will never be able, when I'm going at full speed, to take my one hand and to pull that out all. I thought that, that is not going to be possible for me. I'm going to crash myself to pieces if I do that. But it is absolutely groundbreaking if you can learn how to use the adjustable out all. Pick a nice, moderate, easy wind day where you can use one of your bigger cells and you can easily let go of your one hand. Whilst obviously at that point making sure that your harness lines were absolutely balanced and play around with the adjustable outdoor. So make sure that you are not going at full speed when you first try to do this. It doesn't matter if you need to sort of lose your plane and set the outdoor and then get onto the plane again. It's all part of the learning process. That's how I started. So you will soon reach a point where you'll feel that you're fully planning, you are going fast speed, you are in control, you can easily let your hand go, it becomes like second nature and you can pull in that outdoor when you hit heavy winds or you can release it when you are in a big section where there is um, less wind. 
way back, I used to only sell with a seat on us. When Raffaello Gardelli from Surf and Curve, he presented me with a brand new Severn Racing Waist Harness, which is the one that you guys have been seeing in all my photos on Facebook and Instagram. That harness I haven't replaced since 2016 because it is my favorite racing harness. It has been life-changing to switch over to a proper racing waist harness. This harness of Severn has got proper support for your entire back. So it's super comfortable. I personally noticed that when I switched over from the seat to the waist harness, that my whole selling starts improved by miles. I had lots more control over my board. And I think that is the biggest reason why I'm still with a waist harness is because the amount of control that I have over my board and my stance that I can maintain with my racing gear has improved so much ever since I've moved away from the seat harness. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if Severn didn't make such a great supportive waist harness. If you really love your seat harness and that's your style, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I would definitely say, if you are curious, try it out. Just see how it feels. Maybe it is the thing for you to do. For me, my 7.8 and my 117 liter Isonic, together with the 40 gas wheel fin, that combination is for me like formula windsurfing. I can actually get planning on that setup in about 10 to 12 knots. One of my favorite combos is using my 7 with my 107 liter Isonic together with the 38 gas wheel fin. This combo is my favorite lighter wind combo. When the wind is about 12 to 15 knots, that is the ideal rig that I would use. So anywhere between 16 to 20 knots. For that type of wind strength, I would move down to my 6.2, also my 107 liter Isonic, and then using my 36 gas wheel fin. When the tide is coming in and there's enough water to work with on the fin, I would put in a 34 fin instead of the 36. Going over into the mid 20, high 20 knots, that is when I haul out my 5.5, five, my Fox, and my 32 to 34 bar box fins from gas wheel. The 5.5 Mach 2 has got a very deep profile, so that little cell packs a massive amount of power. It was such a surprise from the Mach 1 5.5s up to the Mach 2 5.5s. There's really a big difference in how deep that cell sits. It sometimes feels even more powerful than my 6.2 on certain days. So that cell has got a very wide wind range. If you need more information on the Severn Fox, make sure you check out my previous video that I made. I'll put a link um, up here for you guys so that you can just follow that video as well. Severn designs their cells and masts so that the setup is extremely light, maneuverable, easy to manage, it's easy to rig, and the rotation is effortless. I really believe that Severn cells are some of the best cells in the world. There's barely any day in season time that stretches over almost half of the year that I am not out there on the water. And I've never had any problem with regards to durability and quality of my Severn cells. And that also applies to the masts and the booms. Every time at the end of the year when I get all my new cells, I almost feel like these cells are like almost brand new still. Um, how can I sell them already? They don't feel like they did, nothing is wrong with them. They look like as though they come out of the pocket like that. The Severn race cells have got a very specialized shape that contains a lot of twist towards the top of the cell. This helps a lot with acceleration and control. As long as your setup is completely in balance with your body, the experience should be almost effortless and there shouldn't be pressure on your arms. So you'll notice that you'll be able to hold down bigger cells in stronger winds when you switch over to the Severn race cells paired with the correct mast. Severn, could not have made it easier for us to reach top performance and full on enjoyment with racing cells. Every single year, the cells improves by massive leaps. And just as I thought that this can't get any better, the next year comes and the cell performs on a whole new level. So Severn is definitely right on top there and the front end of the new development in racing cells. So the best way to test all of these settings is to go out there and to change one thing at a time. The tiniest, tiniest amount of changes that you make will have a massive influence. Go for small changes because you'll, you'll notice the massive difference it makes and that's the way to get your sweet spot with your rigging setup. 
I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when using race sales is they tend to overreak. I find that the guys who follow the PWA, they look at those guys and they are like, that is the size cell you should be holding down in that amount of wind. And what I've experienced personally for myself is that when I rig a cell that is too big for the wind that is blowing, I do not go faster. I go slower because I don't have the control over that cell that I need for proper speed. With a smaller cell, I go much faster because I've got full control over that cell. So I find a lot of guys that take out a big cell, they pull in the outdoor and they hold onto that cell. But the board starts down walking and everything is out of control. But that cell they hold down because that is the size cell that will make them faster than everyone else. And I think personally that's the biggest mistake to make. When you are not completely in control of your gear, rather take a, st a step smaller cell and release the auto properly. Have that cell set into a proper racing profile and be completely in control of that setup and you will definitely go faster. In slalom racing, it is very good if you can sometimes rig one size bigger than what you normally should take out because when you're racing in such a big fleet, there can be a lot of wind holes created by all the wind servers around you, especially on the start line and at the jive marks. But for recreational windsurfing and for windsurfing for fun and enjoyment with slalom race styles, do not make the mistake of always over-rigging for the kind of strength wind that is blowing because you will definitely miss out on a higher level of enjoyment and control within your windsurf session. The bottom line, it's important to try out all the different things. Take advice from everyone and learn from everyone that you come across. But then in the end of the day, you need to make your own decision as to what feels comfortable for you. Whether that is making your water slides extremely long and you end up sailing like this and you can't hold onto that sail because it's way too far away from your body and you feel that is not enjoyable, then that is not what you should be doing. You should then go back, set it up again and try it out in a different way until you get that sweet spot comfort level for your sailing style and your specific gear combinations. You become super aware of yourself while you are sailing. You should be able to focus exactly on how you feel, where you feel imbalances. I think that people tend to just become totally closed up for what they're actually feeling because people tend to follow each other so much that they've lost, lost track about how they are feeling as a person when they sail. So it's important to take advice and to listen to all the different people and athletes and top professional within the windsurfing world. But in the end of the day, you are the only person who will decide which ones work for you and which don't. And that will differ for each and every person. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have got any more questions with regards to race style rigging or Severn gear components. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you like to stay up to date with all my coming videos.